Hey everyone, welcome back to Subulet Wellness. As you can tell by the title of today's video, we're having another sit down chat. Uh, and this one's actually super close to home and personal for me to share. Um, it's a story or it's a part of myself that I wasn't ready to share um, for a really long time in my life. Uh, and I finally feel ready to talk about it um, and share it with all of you guys and with my family and my friends um, and really kind of start journeying myself into this new um, chapter or phase of my life in this new phase of self-discovery. Um, so as you can tell by the title of this video, it's uh, how I became bi-curious. Um, so I'm just going to be sharing my experiences today of why I decided to become bi-curious, um, why I've decided to start dating men and women, uh, how that came to be, why uh, it's taken me this long to talk about it, um, and just hopefully, yeah, share my story and my experience and maybe it might help one of you guys watching this. Um, I don't know if there's someone out there in the world right now that just needs to hear this, but um, for me personally, it took me a long time to get here, um, but I'm finally ready to start to explore this part of myself and this part of my life and um, I'm ready to share it as well, so that's really exciting and I hope that uh, by talking about it and making it public here and starting the conversation on this channel and this platform, um, it can bring comfort to someone else who might be also going through an experience like this or looking for someone to relate to because I know that um, these types of stories, they're super common nowadays. I think there's like way more um, sexual liberation and fluidity um, and it's way more acceptable in society than it was like years ago, um, but it's still not totally normal, at least for me and my experience. Um, I'm, I'm still kind of getting used to it. Uh, so yeah, I just thought I'd share my perspective, normalize it a bit on here, and then hopefully it might help any of you guys who might be going through something similar, um, or might help you with a friend who might be going through something similar, or a family member. Um, yeah, so basically I always just kind of do a disclaimer. I just share these stories my, from my own personal experience because I find I learn best through other people's experiences. So everything I say here is just what I've experienced. I'm not saying anyone else has the same views or same opinions. Um, it's just my personal story and I thought I'd share it. Uh, so yeah, how do we get here? How do we become, become bi-curious? Um, I did post a blog uh, called What I Learned in Therapy and in that blog um, it talks about, I talk about my sexuality and how I talked and kind of became more comfortable with my sexuality through therapy and that was one of the lessons I learned. So go read that blog. Um, I shared just kind of like why I went to therapy, um, things I learned in therapy, how I got over my breakup and learned to heal myself and kind of have more self-acceptance then also how I learned to discover my sexuality through therapy. Um, but today's video is just going to be specifically about how I became bi-curious um, and what that word means to me and how I'm living my life and dating now um, with the bi-curious mindset uh, and approach, I guess you could say. So for as long as I could remember, um, since a kid, I've always been interested in both sexes. Um, I've always been attracted to both men and women. Um, and I remember as a kid thinking because of the way I was brought up, and I'm not saying the way I was brought up was wrong at all, but just because of the way I was brought up, I was exposed to a lot of heterosexual relationships. So both my parents are straight, my siblings are straight as far as I know, but I watched TV, movies, um, rom-coms, like it was always that guy pursuing the girl, and so I was just basically bombarded with heterosexual relationships and the idea of like that's what a relationship is from a very young age. So I grew up a little bit confused wondering why I was always attracted to both men and women. Um, and I, when I was younger, I definitely thought that that was wrong. Um, and I would, I'd question myself and I'm like, why am I still looking at women when I really should just be looking at men? And it was really confusing for me to understand. Um, and because it was so confusing to understand and I was also growing up and learning a bunch of other things about myself, I kind of just shut it down um, and just ignored it as best as I could. So I kind of went about my life all throughout high school, all throughout university. I just dated men. I always was attracted to men. Still am attracted to men. Still date men. Still love men. Um, but I just kind of shut down that other part of myself because I wasn't ready to deal with it. Um, however, I think everybody in their life can relate to this. If you're shutting down a part of yourself, it's not like it goes away. Like the voice is still there, the little nagging and the tap on the shoulder is still always there. And so for me, it was really hard because it was this conversation I was having with myself in my head, um, but I was never able to articulate it or express it. And I just wasn't ready to deal with it. And honestly, looking back, I have a lot of self-compassion for myself because you know, I was going through a lot, I was making a lot of changes, I was making a lot of big life choices, especially when I was going to university. Um, I was thinking about my career and my life and my friends and I, I didn't have time to deal with this part of me. 
Um, and then throughout university, uh, I fell in love and that was an amazing, remarkable experience for me and I was so in love with that person that I just completely forgot about it as well. Um, and it wasn't until my relationship kind of started to dwindle that those thoughts kept coming back up and I thought to myself, is this really it? Am I never going to explore that part of myself? Am I just going to be with this person forever? Um, and a lot of anxiety started to come into my life regarding that as well. So if you read the blog post, you'll know that um, basically I, I only saw heterosexual relationships my whole life growing up. So it was really normal for me in my mindset, and this is something I learned in therapy, to think that I should just be in a heterosexual relationship because that's what was so normalized to me and that's what I saw all the time on TV and in my family's relationships and stuff like that. Um, so thinking about being with a woman was seemed a little bit uncomfortable and a little strange and not natural because I just had never seen it before and I never tried it out. Just like everything else in life, it's gonna be weird and uncomfortable at first um, because it's new, right? Just like when you go on your first date with anybody, it's gonna be a little bit uncomfortable. Um, so that was something that I worked on in therapy as well, was just being more comfortable, understanding that this is something new and I'm gonna have to explore it and see what works and what doesn't work. And it's okay if it doesn't work out, but it's better to at least explore that part of myself and give it the space that it needs um, than to keep shutting it down. Because if I keep shutting it down, it's just gonna keep that internal dialogue of kind of stressing me out. Um, so anyways, my relationship was awesome. Um, however, though, towards the end when it started to kind of go downhill, I remember meditating and thinking to myself like, if I ever, if this relationship ends, like I'm going to therapy and I'm gonna try dating women um, because I just need to know how this feels and I need to know if it's right for me or not because I just, I never knew and it was driving me mental. <laughs> um, so obviously uh, my relationship ended last year in July. Um, so it's a year actually from that date, which is just wild to think about like how many things happen a year and all the changes that happen. So if you're going through something tough or a breakup right now, just sit tight, like you're gonna go through so much self-discovery and so much growth and it sucks right now, I'm not gonna lie to you, it fucking sucks. Um, but like, I just, I'm not the same person I was last year and I just feel more and more like myself every single day and I needed that to happen to get here. So just know that if you're going through something really shit in your life right now, there's gonna be a bigger picture. Like there always is and there's gonna be some reason why what's happening to you is happening to you because it's pushing you into the growth that you need. I was too scared to end my relationship. I was like so comfortable and so fine in that box, but I was suffocating myself in that box just to have something that was ideal and normal and made sense and looked good on paper and made everybody else in my life happy, but it wasn't even making me happy or my partner at the time, um, which is just wild to think about that I was in that mindset. So that's why I'm just so grateful for where I am now and like a year, it gave me that time at least to grow and to evolve and to discover these parts of myself. So obviously when, the, when it did end, I was a mess, I was a basket case, I wasn't gonna date anybody. Um, so I had to kind of grieve that loss and grieve that relationship. Um, I went home, spent two weeks at home with my family, which was really lovely. Uh, and when I came back out to Vancouver, I told myself that I would try dating again, um, just to get back out there, try something new. Uh, and my first person who I started dating after my ex um, was a man. And again, I felt guilty because it was like, I have this opportunity to try out dating women, but I just went back to this man. Um, and to me, that was like kind of a triggering point. Like, what are you doing? Like, you're just gonna get back in this cycle of like always wondering what if. Um, and that's kind of what led me to therapy. So um, when I went to therapy, uh, it was honestly like the best thing I could have done for myself because it gave me a safe space to talk about this outside of my head. So my therapist was the first person I ever told that I was interested in dating women. Um, and after saying it to her and just getting it out of my head, it was like everything relaxed. And it was like, okay, this is okay. This is normal. We can talk through this. We can work on this. Um, she really just helped me see like, again, like why I have those thought patterns, why I always go for men. Like, I was feeling guilty about starting a relationship with a guy right after my ex, um, but that was just a learning experience and that was also a really great part of like exploring myself as well sexually and I learned something from that and she was just really compassionate with me in the sense that like 
it's okay if this feels weird, but let's just start making small steps. Um, so with her, we talked about different ways that I could try dating women and seeing how that felt that would make me feel comfortable. So the first was, okay, why don't we download some dating apps and why don't we set our profile to everybody or to women and just see what's out there. Um, and so I did that and then I came back and we talked about it and yes, it felt a little bit weird and it felt a little bit like uncomfortable at first, but it's just like everything else in life when you start something it's gonna feel uncomfortable and weird um so at that point it was kind of like late late january uh and i was trying to make an effort to date women but to be honest i just still really wasn't there i was still struggling with my breakup um trying to get over that trying to feel like fully myself again so i took some time i dated a lot of guys again and i kind of fell back into that cycle but i kind of fell into it with a bit more compassion for myself um i knew like what I was doing and I was aware of it and I just was like Al you know when you're ready to date a woman and when the right woman comes along you'll do it and you'll get there um it's just not right now and maybe the universe is throwing you all these kind of subpar guys to show you like hey you really shouldn't be doing this and you should really focus on um exploring dating women so yeah so basically went to therapy worked on that downloaded dating apps started talking to women online I still hadn't really spoken to my family yet at this point or a lot of my friends I had a couple few close friends and a couple of my coworkers who I said it to. Um, I just kind of casually was like, I think I want to start dating women. And they were all so accepting and so lovely. And that is something that I'm going to take away from this. I'm just so, so, so grateful that, um, and I acknowledge that this isn't the case for everyone. And again, disclaimer, like I can't speak from the experience of feeling like I, people wouldn't accept me for this because I knew when it, I was ready to share this with my friends and family, they would accept me, um, which just makes me like, I, I don't want to like get emotional, but it's just, it was so comforting because it was like, I just need to say it um, and it's going to be fine when I'm ready. And I never felt pressured. Um, I kind of just one day was like, you know what? I think today's the day I'm, I'm turning to talk to women again online and I really want to have everyone on board. I'm ready to talk about this on this channel and I want not to surprise anyone. So I was able to talk to my family and my friends and explain to them, hey, I've never been with a woman before, so I don't know if I'm bisexual, but I'm definitely bi-curious and I want to try this out. Um, and they were all just like so loving, so accepting, amazing. Um, I know like for family, it's kind of hard to see your family, but if your friends aren't supportive of you, um, then they're not your friends and you shouldn't be friends with them. Um, because the people who love you in your life will want nothing but happiness for you. Um, and that's a big, big, big thing I learned also in this year. So um, yeah, just surrounding yourself with people who are going to support you and guide you through this is also really really important okay i feel like i kind of went off on a tangent there where were we so yeah at the beginning of the year i was kind of dating men wasn't really into it um and then the pandemic hit and um i had a lot of time to sit with myself sit with my feelings and i was like you know what i am fully ready to like immerse myself in this and really give it a go this time and really start to like engage in conversations with women and go out with women um, and so I told my family, <laughs> told my friends, um, and I started downloading dating apps. Um, I find that's the easiest way to meet women. Not that I haven't met women in public as well. I definitely, um, put myself in situations where I'm around gay women and I talk to them about it. Also too, side note, a lot of women are open to dating women and that's something I never thought of. But if you just kind of talk casually from your own experience, I would say six times out of 10, the person, like any women who I've talked to so far have also hooked up with women before or have had a relationship with a woman. Um, and you kind of just get a vibe. I usually just say something like, hey, yeah, like I'm interested in dating women or like I'm starting to explore this part of myself and they'll be like, yeah, you know, I dated a woman last year or oh, I used to hook up with women this time. And like, I don't know, I feel like when you talk to your friends and your family and you talk to people who you meet at a bar, like they're way more open. Than, which is not the, it's something that's usually talked about or at least in my past, I never brought it up so it was never talked about. So. That's something I've also learned is just start talking about it with your friends and family. Like you're gonna have conversations with people who you're so shocked by and they're gonna be like, yeah, dude, like this is so normal and I do this all the time and give you advice. And that was like another big takeaway for me is just by sharing with my friends and family, I learned so much more about myself. Um, and also felt way more safe and um, supported in that space to talk about this and to explore this new side of myself. So yeah, I can't really say I'm bisexual because I've never actually been with a woman, but I'm definitely bi-curious. Um, I'm definitely interested and excited to explore this new part of myself. Um, I don't know how it's going to go, but I'm hoping it works out well. Um, again, like I just have never felt so like happy and sure of myself and more like myself in my skin than I have 
this like past year and just kind of unraveling these layers and it honestly really started with just that big shakeup. and so if you are going through a big shakeup, know that there is like light at the end of the tunnel and like you're gonna discover these new parts of yourself that you never knew were possible uh, that's where I'm at right now I'm by curious I'm gonna try dating women I'm gonna probably still de keep dating men um, I'm gonna keep working on myself and discovering new parts of myself um, and I'm gonna be open and honest with it with you guys because I found when I heard my friends and people online talk about this, it just normalized it more and it made me feel more comfortable. So I want this to be a safe space. I want people to be able to talk about it. And if this is something that you've been thinking about and you don't really know how to start to get started um, and you want to talk to someone, DM me, talk to me. I'm more than happy to listen, non-judgmental, safe space. I will not expose you um, if you just want to kind of say it because it really, the, the best thing that I ever did was just saying it to someone and then as soon as I got it out of my head and, and out there, I felt way more like ready to tackle it and take it on. So I hope if you're watching this, you're feeling like I was feeling, you eventually get to that spot where you're ready to talk about it out loud because it's really empowering and I think the more we uncover these parts of ourselves and the more we sit with ourselves and discover these parts of ourselves, the more closer we come to ourselves. Um, and I think that's a really beautiful, powerful thing. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of my experience of how I became bi curious and why I am changing the way I date and who I date. My last comment I will make um, is that one thing I've learned too while dating is that I've always been attracted to people who are kind and compassionate and caring and it's not really about the body they're in, but it's more about their spirit and their soul and like their energy that they give off. Um, that's who I find myself by being attracted to and I think that it's really powerful when you kind of slip away that idea of what the person should look like or what their body should be like and you just connect with someone on like that intimate level. Um, so I'm looking forward to just broadening my horizon and trying new things and discovering this new part of myself. Uh, I'm going to share as much as I can on my channel and talk about this and normalize it. Um, I know I've talked before about going on dates with guys and when to go if you're on a second date or when to drop them or if they're a fuckboy, but I also am going to start talking about what my dates are like with women and how they're different and maybe what attracts me to certain people um, in case it helps any of you guys along your journey as well. So. That is my story on how I became bi-curious and how I was finally ready to accept this part of myself and discover it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe because that really helps this channel. Um, and I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day and staying safe and healthy. Thank you so, so, so much for watching and I'll see you all soon for another video.